me i mean talk about one hell of an intro there joel thank you yes <laughs> i tell you what i'm loving the uh the the new words and all the things you've been playing with fighting for the right to party um and uh i think today is going to have uh we, we're going to have one hell of an interesting conversation because um, the subject around neurodiversity and entrepreneurs and what's the connection uh, should be an interesting discussion. And as our prequel conversation earlier, where I said, we should aim for about 45 minutes. And you were like, nah, we'll talk forever. Um, so <laughs> we'll see how this conversation uh, pans out. But I think uh, I've got lots of um, uh, questions for you today, but I've also got lots of interesting points that uh, I think we should uh, discuss because um, for those of you who haven't joined us before, welcome. Uh, today, uh, I'm not sure. I'm in two windows over here on my on my screen. I don't know what what happened there. Um, but um, the uh, conversation today is is not only a continuation from our, our first season, but also a continuation of many discussions we've had off of Rockstar X uh, on Life Hacks with Mac Channel, as well as our audio sessions and pretty much an everyday life with uh, with you, Joel. Um, so, uh, you know, what are you looking forward to getting out of today's discussion? There we go. Um, that's what I wanted to do, first of all, um, which is why you were pinned two screens there. I actually forgot to do, there was two parts to do it. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> hey, we live and learn. This is what it's all about, man. I only wish I'd lived and learned before a live session, but then uh, but there we go. Uh, hey, you know, when you want for perfection, nothing gets done. Well, what, um, what in this series we are highlighting, we are also expanding on some of the uh, previous topics, and uh, we are going to be attempting to discover in this particular episode what we are going, um, uh, what the connection is between uh, being neurodiverse and entrepreneurs. And I think, uh, you know, there's, there's quite a bit to discover around that topic, because one of the things, uh, for those of you who, who haven't um, been on any of our previous discussions around the whole neurodiverse space, uh, you know, I had the pleasure to join Joel with some of our wonderful co-hosts on our social Saturday chat this weekend, where Joel got spotlighted and shared some of your uh, wonderful experience. Um, but you know, even though the conversation was quite uplifting and 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 um, you know insightful to learn, there were quite a few things that were quite you know hard hitting with regards to some of the challenges you faced. I mean, one of the questions you asked was, you know, what were some of the good experiences you've had when it comes to people introducing themselves and you know trying to get to know you, and and the thing that hit me what there was the fact that you you struggle to come up with good experiences because you had more, uh, should we say, not so great experiences. Um, and having those great experiences were a, a struggle for you to even come up with because of the fact that, um, you know, our world is, is filled with people that, um, should we say, are too busy in their own worlds that they don't really go on to discover, you know, how they impact those around them or how those people around them could impact them. Um, and one of the things that you, you mentioned was, you know, people assuming or feeling that you are lesser than, um, which, 
you know, for anybody to feel lesser than is, you know, just an awful, awful concept. But I mean, it, it you know, I can't even begin to imagine how that impacted you. Um, and then, you know, the world of entrepreneurship, the challenges you would face in order to even embark on that journey when, you know, the majority of your experiences are negative um, and therefore the hill that you've got to climb is so much, you know, steeper than the average person who um, is not necessarily labeled. And I've actually got some interesting ex uh, examples today of famous people that have gone through those journeys. Um, but let's start with your, yourself, Joel. I mean, how, um, how has neurodiversity impacted your journey as a entrepreneur? Oh, um, we are really well zoomed in. Why are we zoomed in? Ah, there we go. <laughs> oh, I pressed the wrong one. I meant to press three. <laughs> it's all good. I got there. Go for it. <laughs> Why I pressed two? I've got no idea. But anyway, anyway, I'm going to do. It. I'm going to swap myself over, and then. Oh, did it work? No, it didn't work. I'm going to swap myself over, and then, oh, we're going to, and, then we're, and then we're going to do this. I just took a step to the right. I answer. There we go. Um. So, where I, I've always not done anything, shall we say, logically and i've always done things my way and in in a roundabout sort of way to any any person which perhaps doesn't have a um a neurodiverse brain and i felt it i felt because of that that i would fit into the category of neurodiverse entrepreneur because but i don't but i'm not really I, i'm i'm one of these I'm, i've got i'm i'm one of these funny thing funny people really um i don't fit into one or the other or the other um i i'm bang slap in the middle um and that is a challenge for me because I sometimes don't know which way I'm going to be going or what I'm going to be doing. So the immediate entrepreneur that I um, have, I only have one example, sadly. Matt, you probably have several more, but I only have one. And that's um, Elon Musk who came out at some point and said he had Asperger's or Asperger's. I don't quite know how you pronounce that word. Um, and uh, he is one of the richest people in the world. And um, he has done, he is, love him or hate him, he's done extraordinary, extraordinarily, extraordinary things. So it takes a special type of brain to A, spot that gap, B, think of an idea to fill that gap, and C, have the balls to do that and um, fill the gap. I'm going to pass pass it back to Mac now before I do this. Let's get this absolutely <laughs> right before we do this. So we're going to do we're going to go um we're going to go back to number three. Awesome stuff. Time. Uh, yeah, there we go, and we're going to swap me over. There we go. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy here with all the the, the swaps and changes. But um, I mean, so you raise the point of obviously um, Elon Musk who post his success has you know, come out with the fact that he, he has Asperger's uh, syndrome. And yet, you know, we had this discussion over the weekend on our uh, Social Saturday chat about whether people should let uh, those around them know whether they have neuro, you know, some form of neuro, neurodiversity um, or are you know, classified as a neuro, neurodivergent. And 
uh, you know, how that potentially will impact others. And, and uh, um, you know, an interesting example, which I, I, I didn't know, was um, an actress called Daryl Hannah. And she was well known for her kind of 80s um, blockbusters in Blade Runner and Wall Street um, and Steel Magnolias and various other, various other things. And when she came out as um, having, you know, and letting people know that she has Asperger's, um, all of a sudden she found herself to almost be blacklisted on the movie scene because people didn't know how to deal with that. You know, they didn't know how um, that would impact them working with her and vice versa. Um, and, you know, it, it, it massively limited her opportunities. But she, I mean, she ended up pushing on and, and uh, appearing in uh, the uh, well-acclaimed Kill Bill series, which is epic, um, and various other things uh, because of her perseverance. But it just shows you that no matter where you are, whether you're an unknown individual who is you know, just at school um, or uh, just starting out in business as an entrepreneur, um, the moment there is that kind of, Hmm, this person is different, then all of a sudden it puts roadblocks up for individuals and uh, it makes for um, a more challenging um, you know, process just to be able to achieve what other people can because there's no label as, you know, um, uh, attached. And you know, so, so for yourself as an example, Joe, I mean, you are working on numerous different things. You, you've got your music business that you, you, you've been involved in as a, as a teacher and somebody who specializes in um, being able to work with uh, you know, neurodiverse uh, children, as an example, and coach and teach them music. And you know, this is one of the things that you, you spoke about previously on Saturday about um, you know, a family member, your cousin, who even though he might not be um, you know, he's not vocal. He he doesn't uh, you know necessarily speak. But you put him behind a drum set, and all of a sudden the man's like a magician. And it's like, you know, so what do you what have you found being one of the biggest challenges when somebody goes, oh, there's something different here. What is the one thing that really annoys you when somebody clicks, ah, oh, there's something different. You know, uh, how has that impacted you? And, and and you know, what should we do differently? Well, for a start, what we should do differently, Mac, and everyone who is watching, I don't have a bat cave in front of me, so I can't really see those who are watching or commenting, which is um, not great. But what I think <clears throat> the first obvious thing we should do is um, get to know a person as an individual as opposed to putting labels on them and judging them before you get to know them. Yeah. Last time I checked, I said this in, in my in my monologue in, on my YouTube channel and uh, and um, we yes I may have more labels in the supermarkets but um, I I'm a human, and you should get to name me as a human, not not a, not someone that's on the shelf and you want to play with. And, and that's quite a, I mean, that's quite a, a a big statement because you know that simplicity of you put with put it there. You know, you're not somebody that's on a shelf. That's somebody that you can you know, pick off a shelf and play with. It's you know, there's this interesting way that people tend to communicate and deal with individuals that are different is they're like, oh, look at me. I've got a friend that is, you know, X, Y, Z, or I've got somebody that is of a different race, or I have a friend that's from a different religion. And it's almost like there's like an approval box to kind of go, oh, look at me, um, <laughs> as opposed to, hey, let me get to know the individual and what's going, you know, and who they are. Um, so it's more like an association status kind of thing. Um, and I, I, I find that, you know, quite interesting, uh, because there's, uh, you know, um, I've had so many discussions, whether it be religion, race, or, um, you know, other with people that have, you know, they know of somebody who is, and therefore they assume they know. 
Um, one of the points that you brought out this weekend um, on our discussion was the fact that very few people take the time to actually get to know the individual. Um, so they get to know the, the person and their label, and then that's pretty much kind of very surface level stuff. But if we look at some of the individuals that have prospered out in the world, and you know, I don't know, you know what your thoughts are on this, but it must be quite a, a lonely journey when most people are just trying to pick somebody off the shelf with the label and associate with them as opposed to get to know them. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, my thoughts on getting to know people, yes. Um, I've noticed that I don't know how it is in, in, in anywhere else, but I noticed that in the UK, the more north you go, the more friendlier people are, people are. Um, but if you go to Glasgow, you've gone too far. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, I know a lot of great Glaswegians. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, so in London, example, I be, I was studying in Manchester um, for three years uh, back in between the years of um, what is great uh, the years of you playing way too much today. <laughs> 20 between uh, 20 uh, 2009 2013 um and i noticed an immediate difference in how people greeted you on the street they said hello and how are you they actually gave two shits about you even if they had no idea who you were but in london if you so much look at someone they're like please don't touch me or come anywhere near me or in fact don't even look at me for that matter I, th I think that's a that's a pretty much international thing um because of the fact i mean if you go around the world um you know cities like uh, if you go to south africa as an example you've got johannesburg and cape town now in cape town people are laid back and they kind of you know, more chill to get to know you. Johannesburg is like, hey, we're here to make money. We like, <laughs> let's get going. Um, no time for kind of chit chat. Um, and then you've got like cities like New York, same thing. You know, it's like you, you just get in and you, you've got to go. Otherwise, you get left behind. Um, and the same, you know, London, you know, you get on a tube and everybody's either on their phone or in a book. Or um, if you even just like say hi to somebody on the train, they'll look at you like you're from another planet. Um, <laughs> Whereas it goes slightly outside of London and all of a sudden people are like, hey, and they actually wait for a response when they say, hey, how are you? Or nice to meet you. Um, but, you know. It wasn't my experience in New York, actually. They, I found them very friendly. Ah, okay. Um, well, very different to a lot of people's experiences then. But obviously you've got that <laughs> magic touch there, Joel. No, um, no, no. I think, they, I think they're just caca for the accent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's probably very true. Um, but when we look at, you know, the fact that, you know, going back to this whole kind of label mentality where very few people, the moment something is different or someone is different, people tend to move on rather than stick around to try and find out, you know, about those individuals. And, um, you know, you with your incredible music talent, both in the drums and the guitar, um, you know, there's a, a musician, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but it's Tony Deblois. I don't know if you know of him. I don't know him, no. So, you know, uh, this is, you know, he's an incredible uh, musician who, first he was born blind, um, but then also um, they found out later on that he was diagnosed with autism. Now, when you've got um, you know, an individual who's clearly different from everybody else, firstly, because you know, obviously visually, um, uh, you know, the visually impaired, as well as um, having autism, most people wouldn't know how to nat naturally deal with that. Um, now, I've been uh, blessed with uh, growing up with 
uh, family members and individuals in my family that you know were blind and um, incredible musicians, um, as well as um, uh, you know family members that are on the spectrum and various forms of neuro neurodiversity. And it's amazing that once you get to know those individuals, just because they wired differently, means that they um, they have. If you take the time to get to know and support those. Um, you'll find out that they have like focused superpowers that are just like, you know, the average person would fear because they, you know, how many people do we know, including myself that have a guitar at home, but never learned to play the bloody thing, you know? Um, and this guy, as an example, you know, when he was diagnosed with autism, he went on to master 20 different instruments. Now, you know, here's me with, just a guitar, trying to master that. Um, and, uh, you know, 20 different instruments, but also being able to play over 8,000 pieces of music off by heart, like knowing those, you know, each one of those pieces. Um, and you look at individuals who, uh, you know, in the average entrepreneurial um, workplace where people are just trying to figure out what a, sales process is or just how to how do i start my business um you know with those kind of talents that is you know the the, the opportunities that are available um that though that can be unlocked if you spend time to get to know these individuals um is just absolutely incredible uh, so you know for yourself as an example what are the what are the things that i guess people have assumed or underestimated you at just because um you are labeled you know neurodiverse or with autism well first of all um my ability to actually comprehend what the heck a teacher is saying um and also, if LinkedIn ban me for this, it's a word I cannot disguise the word. I have been mixed up, and this might be another time as well, Mac, with another, uh, it might be another uh, entire um, talk on this word. But I've been called mixing up the word autism with retard i mean a they're spelled differently and b they have two different meanings um it, yeah i mean <laughs> it sounds it, it, it's interesting how over time you know 20 30 years ago that was almost like a common label for anybody that was different um and you know as we become more educated it's so much more important um for people to realize that it's so easy to to use a um what do you call it um uh you know a a description or a label for somebody and totally get it wrong because that and, and the, the ironic thing i find is it's normally the individual giving that label that is a bit special in the sense that they don't have a clue you know they're not educated they don't understand um and then and there's a lot of assumption around that so you know how have you how have you dealt with it when individuals have you know uh, used those those kind of words well so, well i go i go i i i i must i must tell you this man I have a song for absolutely every single mood on my on my on, on my <laughs> Spotify playlist. I think you um, need to share that Spotify playlist um, in the comments, by the way, after this, so that people can go and find uh, one of those songs that I guarantee you there's something that'll empower you. I can't sit still when I listen to it. Oh, that, that and our playlist has got over a thousand songs now on it. Um, they just keep coming. I, I, at this point, I'm just curious to see what Spotify, what the limit on Spotify is for playlists. Um, 
Well, I did find out today that on um, a certain uh, AI music device, you can't say skip to the oh. next song more than 60 times. Did you know that? Nope. I was astounded. Today I just went, you can't do more than 60 skips in one hour. Well, try and like, say hey. skip in another language and see if that works. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so talk to me. You know, as an entrepreneur and a, and a business owner, when people have used these misguided or misinformed or miseducated labels um you know how's that number one made you feel and number two how have you been you know how have you dealt with that to to potentially move them into a more educated um position well first of all i became a drummer <laughs> yeah and secondly um i For a good number of years, I used to say, "Why me?" That's from childhood, and and then and then I met and then I met my mentor, David Meltzer, who told who then said to flip that around and say, "Try me." Instead, try and push a button, and see what happens. I guarantee you're not gonna like it. <laughs> Do you think it's made you more? resilient and robust because of the challenges that you faced um as a result oh yes um absolutely uh it's it, in fact their remarks and judgment have had the uh have backfired spectacularly like brexit has on this country <laughs> absolutely um <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to be so careful with this conversation. They go. <laughs> um, you must know by now, Mac, that whenever you get me on camera. Yeah, absolutely. I've got to be so careful before I get kicked off the channel. Um, so, uh, you know, I want to do, there was somebody else that I wanted to bring up um, because a lot of people may, may not know this name, but as an entrepreneur and, and, um, you know, somebody that has uh, Asperger's syndrome uh, or Asperger's, uh, depending on how you pronounce it or where you're from. Um, you know, there are a lot of individuals that, you know, we've already discussed on, pre uh, on other platforms that the moment that you mention that you are, uh, you know, dyslexic or you have autism or you have uh, something that's on the neurodiverse um, kind of uh, grouping, as it were, then all of a sudden, you know, that can put up obstacles and, uh, you know, prevent you from being able to achieve some of the things that you want to you want to go out and achieve. And um, so we also found that, what's it, 67, 68% of, of hiring managers wouldn't necessarily take on individuals that they knew were neurodiverse because of the just not knowing how to onboard those people and how to deal with those people. But then as business owners, um, you know, I wonder, and, and if anybody is watching this and they, know, and they have some stats on this, how that impacts, as an example, um, organizations that would help startups, you know, um, whether, you know, and what the discrimination over there is with regards to if somebody is uh, neurodiverse, whether they would see that as a, as a channel or a challenge to support that business. Um, but if we look at, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, have you heard of uh, something, uh, you know, it, it, it's not that famous. It's called Pokemon. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so uh, Satoshi Tajiri is the the, the founder of um, uh, Pokemon, as an example, and he has Asperger's. And, uh, you know, he grew, grew up playing Nintendo games and uh, then decided, you know, he was going to combine uh, some of those uh, Nintendo and Game Boy games to create uh, Pokemon. And if we look at some of the, um, you know, even in the pandemic, how big Pokemon became with people going out there and hunting for their, you know, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the Pokemon um, uh, kind of uh, virtual placeholders, which you could go and hunt for. Um, and, you know, imagine that he wasn't given the opportunity or wasn't as driven to go and, and go and create those things, um, you know, it's now become almost like a cult. I mean, I, I look at my brother-in-law who's 
uh, just turned 41, and he is still like Pokemon mad. I mean, they have the massive events and things like, like that around that. Um, so, you know, a lot of the times different makes us fearful of, of you know, what, how to approach a situation or um, not be able to be confident. And one of the things that you brought out so so um, clearly and, and something that, I mean, it's just so blim and obvious, um, but one of the things that you mentioned this weekend when on our, our uh, LinkedIn audio was, you know, if you want to know something about someone, go to the source. Don't go to somebody else because it's so easy for us to go, ooh, okay, well, let me go and speak to somebody who may know them and then ask their opinion. And the challenge there is they might, it might be one of those token um, friends who is the, that are literally just trying to pick a box saying, hey, well, I know somebody with, um, as opposed to somebody who actually has taken the time to get to know that individual. And one of the things you mentioned was, you know, come and spend some time with me. You know, come and just have a normal chat. Don't ask me about, don't necessarily get into the whole, you know, the autism side of it, but get to know me as an individual. Like, what are the things that I like? What what movies do I like? Um, so, you know, as an entrepreneur, how do you think organizations or individuals can best move forward from the position that we're in at the moment where so many people don't know how to approach this? How, um, how, how PG, how PG do you want this? <laughs> you put it this way. We're on a public platform. Uh, we're on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, so I think we need to be, um, yeah, yeah. Keep it clean, Joel. I know, uh, um, you can be quite uh, descriptive with some of the words that you use. Uh, and I unfortunately can very easily follow into that pit. So <laughs> we've got to be fairly careful, but, uh, yeah, as, as PC as possible. Well, stating the obvious, apart from stating the obvious, um, for, uh, Four words, first of all, and then come in there and then, and then open a dialogue with us. Sit down, shut up, and listen. This logo on the on the uh, on the bottom left hand corner, right hand corner of your screens would not be needed if you actually listened. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And as soon as you start listening to us, then the dialogue, then the dialogue will start opening up. But until then, look in the mirror and take a long, hard think. So. You know, based on our topic today, what do you think the biggest connection? What's the connection for you between neurodiversity and entrepreneurship? The most obvious connection is um, the most obvious connection. This is going to be needing that is. Uh, to use the school of rock term, sticking it to the man, or in this case, their boss, or former bosses, or even university um, principals and stuff. Most entrepreneurs you'll find are either college dropouts, high school dropouts, or have rebelled against society for one reason or another. Now, why, why do you think that is? Well, if you know the answer, then perhaps instead of blaming them, blame yourselves. Mm. 
wouldn't they wouldn't need to uh, they wouldn't need to um you would have you would have still had a very a bloody good um employer employee employer whichever way around it is <laughs> um you would have still had a bloody good employee if you had actually just listened to them and let them try something out themselves Instead of them, they took their idea, they took themselves, and they left. So let me ask you this question. You know, I guarantee there's somebody sitting out there who are somebody, or, or maybe somebody like yourself, who has faced you know copious amounts of challenges because of their neurodiversity. They haven't had the right support uh, to be able to um, help them facilitate the incredible things that they could achieve. Um, what would you say to individuals that are wanting to go out there and become or that are entrepreneurial but just not sure where they can get the support um, to be able to achieve the things that they are ultimately meant to do on this planet, should we say? Well, first of all, If you've got an idea of what you want to do, you then need to um, figure out three things. I think three things. It's certainly definitely two things. Um, one is your why. Two is the how. First of all, the what, the why, and the how. The what, the why, and the how. First of all, you want to do the what. What is it you want to do? Sounds bloody obvious. Um, but maybe it's not so obvious when you come to think about what you actually want to do. The, the um, why, why are you doing this? That would come naturally because let's face it, we've all asked that question as to why the hell, why the hell am I bothering, or something like that in uh, in uh, in some stage of our lives. And the third one is how are you going to execute it? And once you know all those three, you'll be able to start with what you want to do. That's an interesting one because, and I'm 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 glad that you started off with the why. Um, no, the what? Well, you re you referenced the why, then the what, and then the uh, then the um, the the who and everything else afterwards. But one of the things that's really important here is you know, if we look at uh, statistics and we look at how many businesses fail within the first five years, and it's you know, uh, in excess of 90% of businesses fail within the first five years. Um, and that why has to be very, very clear. Uh, unfortunately, most people do. Um, and, and I've seen this, you know, uh, over the last 20, 30 years so often where individuals start off businesses as an emotive reason. So, um, you know, <laughs> they had a bad day at work don't like what the boss said to them, think, well, screw it, I'm going to start this business myself. Yeah. Uh, and I've uh, yeah, I've worked in technical roles where individuals have gone, ah, well, you know, I'm doing all the, the technical work over here and my boss has you know, given me a hard time or, uh, you know, not seen the way I see things. So I'm going to go and start my own business and do it myself because I've, I do the technical bit anyway. Um, and then they run into the challenges of, you know, things that you mentioned is, you know, why are you doing it? Um, you need to make sure it's not purely an emotional uh, you know, reason. Um, and then the what and the who is, you know, what is it that you're going to do and who are you going to be surrounding yourself to support you through that process um, as, a, as a, uh, a business owner? Because I see, as an example, whether you're technical or in sales, um, you know, so many people can easily go out and go, well, I can do the technical, so I'll go out and I'll start the business. And then they, they go out, they know how to do something, but they can't find new clients because they don't know how to do the sales or they don't know how to do the marketing. And they don't realize, as um, uh, you, know, you know, that when you start out as an entrepreneur, 
in the beginning, you may have to wear multiple hats. Now, one of the things that you've done um, in a, you know, over the last year already is the magic of making sure that you don't have to wear all those hats. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? What have you, know, what, what have you done as the founder of Rockstar X to make sure that you don't have to be the magic in every part of your business? Well, that's a very good question, Mac. Actually, um, I uh, I did the what, why, and how uh, backwards, really. <laughs> um, the how came first. The why I was told constantly by the most you got that down to a T. Uh, and the what was last um, because when I first started, I had no idea what this was. I knew I wanted to do something, but I had no idea what the heck it was. But I knew uh, and that surrounding myself with people early, uh, apart from uh, apart from finding a producer to do all the technical stuff tonight. Um, <laughs> I'm still wearing that hat, but I it's less hats than I would have worn had I done it from scratch with one man and um well now I can say and his dog. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you can literally <laughs> so yeah, my way might not be the way you um you would probably do it yourself, but it certainly makes life a lot easier if you find if you have the team in place before you start to do the the uh, why and the how, I mean the what. And you know this is one of the things that I implore you for because one of the things that you've really done well uh, at over the last year is find you know individuals that are uh, experts in their own fields, but that bring something to the party as it were to uh, enable the vision that you have um and that's one of the things that unfortunately a, a lot of people try and do everything themselves wear all those hats and as, as an entrepreneur um i think the mindset and and for those of you watching this if you want to drop stuff into the comments feel free to to let us know your thoughts on this but you know the difference between an entrepreneur and somebody who has a business is an entrepreneur is always looking at how they can move forward how they can grow how they can uh, enable things without them being the magic within the business and everything solely depending on that um and this is something that you, you you've been working so hard at even though yes joel you are magic and you uh, uh have so many great ideas and, and uh your vision is incredible you surrounding yourself with other people who can you know enable and help with that journey who have bought into that vision of being able to help neurodiverse individuals excel within the world and have access to the uh, the right tools and systems um, to be able to enable that and and help with that moving forward. So, you know, what are some of the, I guess, tips that you would give people that are thinking about? Putting a team together. What? What? Like, how did you go about that? What? Are, what are the some some of the things you've learned along the way? That it's not a weak uh, thing to realize and identify that you need help. Um. At, but it is a weakness, if you like. I hate that word, but it's the only way we're going to. Go. If you recognize you need help, but you then don't ask for it. And it's a, and that, that's, a that's a powerful line there. Um, and um, why do you that, think sometimes people that, don't ask for help? Well, I'll answer that soon, Mac, but um, and that has uh, that has because I was watching Harry Potter the other night that has reminded me of a quote that 
Um, one of the actors who played he played, he played the headmaster actually um, actually did uh, say, and that was that. Um, and it will stick with me for this. It will stick with me for the entire remaining of my life. Um, help will always be given to those who ask for it. Um, it, <laughs> uh, ooh, hold on, let's have a look over here. I'm just having a look at some of the comments that have uh, come out. Um, I hope it's not Michael Gamble. No, I mean. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is coming back to, to earlier, uh, so our, our city discussions, you know, people being distant and avoiding eye contact is definitely a large city behavior. I hundred percent agree there, Alfredo. It's, uh, um, it's just one of those, those things. It's, uh, again, a safety thing. It's, um, uh, you know, how we protect ourselves and, uh, just kind of move through the day. Um, and, uh, it's like a shoal of fish, just, you know, yeah. stay focused look ahead um, so uh um oh i don't know what happened there um, you froze and then went robot oh ah, did i uh, apologies <laughs> um and uh christina thank you so much also for uh, your comment about uh the great insights um now you know one of the others uh, people that i want to point out that a lot of people probably wouldn't know um uh, you know, is is neurodiverse is uh, a uh, certain actor called Dan Aykroyd. Uh, any any, uh, you know, if you've heard He's of Dan dead. Aykroyd, uh, yes, he is. But he was an incredible uh, actor who, yes, he was. Um, you know, he struggled as a as a um, uh, you know through his kind of growing up years and his teenage years with um, Tourette syndrome. Um, as well as uh, Asperger's and uh, autism, where he, you know, he he used his um, obsessive traits that he had within his autism to really take full advantage of how he kind of went about uh, life and uh, you know went out and created uh, that wonderful series that uh, or series of movies um, that created you know the ghostbusters which is now you know the ghostbusters the so many of those and there's the the woman ghostbusters which are, is uh, epic i mean some of the scenes in there are just brilliant yeah between um, you and me i prefer the original well you know <laughs> there is yeah but everybody i think will have a version that they enjoy and that they like and that resonates with them um but it's you know another individual you know as an example um, which has gone on to to um, take the world by storm was um, uh, Susan Boyle as an example as an artist who you know has Asperger's and prior to you know Britain's Got Talent where she she you know got discovered as it were um, she was somebody who was just seen as an awkward lady who you know. Um, was part of the kind of local neighborhood and then when she came out and, and opened her mouth <laughs> and these incredible notes came out and all of a sudden people were like oh wow different is 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 quite cool actually holy cow she's extremely talented um and it's amazing how we can very quickly judge I mean, it's you know you see it on on these live shows um, quite often where somebody comes on and you think ah you know you've already made up your mind and judged that book by its cover pre even knowing anything about them so you haven't even given them that opportunity or chance to uh, understand what's on the other side and uh, and that's a, a a huge thing to really you know potentially cut yourself off from experiencing magic in our world. Um, I mean, what is your what are your thoughts about that, Joel? I think with Susan Boyle, um, especially with Susan Boyle, uh, she was an extraordinary is rather not was is an extraordinary person and was an extraordinary singer. It's just a shame she hasn't continued that path. Um, 
and it has and that her music has lived out like most sadly most most uh pop boy um girl bands and all that stuff um but the other person that i want to highlight as well i'm not quite sure if it's a rumor or whether it's actually factual but one of them is tim burton we know, we know about him and the other one needs the verification johnny depp um who are also autistic mean yeah honest. johnny depp in 2020 was diagnosed with adhd uh, same as you, Mac. Same as you, except, um, dare I say, better look. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> but as a lot of people call me, uh, it will say I have um, that, and uh, you know, also uh, finding out late in life that I was dyslexic. Um, and I just thought it was the way I, uh, you know, I, I, thought, I just thought it was cool to kind of write words backwards and fill things in differently and. Uh, the fact that I struggled with reading and uh, preferred audio books and, and things like that. Um, so, you know, it, it's incredible that once uh, you find out, um, you know, why, and, and this is the, the big challenge I see, you know, the world tries to make everything into, or pre post, sorry, post World War II, uh, the world was very much programmed around cookie cutter kind of conveyor belt um, creation of human beings. But the reality is, as we found over the, I mean, when the pandemic hit, the amount of creativity that got expelled into the world through uh, the digital age, you know, all of a sudden, you know, who remembers Skype? I mean, Skype was frigging, it's like ages ago, and it was like antiquated, and people were like, oh, well, like, yeah, Skype, yeah, it's okay. Then all of a sudden, Zoom kicks in, and nobody remembers Skype. Um, but... Oh, that's only because Microsoft bought it. Well... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but you know, looking at the the amount of creativity that has exploded in the last three or four years, and you know, if we can enable more neurodiverse people to have the right tools, because as we've said before, um, it's not a disability; it's just a um, it, it, it's not the environment being enabled. Um, I mean, it's like going out and fishing with a hammer i mean it's like well unless the fish is close by you ain't gonna catch it um but you know if you give the person the right tools for their environment then okay then you can you know maybe if they're in a fishbowl with a hammer then that works but if you're out in the ocean or you're trawling you've got to make sure that you understand what the environment is and give the right tools to those individuals so um you know what do you think are, are some of the biggest tools or the, the simplest tools people can use to enable uh, growth for entrepreneurs um, by enabling their environments with the right tools, if that makes any sense. <laughs> we are talking about the actual tool, aren't we, Mac? No. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> um, yeah, just find something which you're passionate about and... Uh... Don't stop chasing it and make it happen. If you really feel strongly about something, make it happen. And it also does help that uh, if you're uh, let go from your work, it makes life, I didn't realize then, it makes life so much easier. <laughs> it's interesting that one because um, I've been made redundant six times in 12 years. I mean, I, I'd never even heard about redundancy when I, until I came to the UK and then all of a sudden it became like the in thing over here. <laughs> uh, and uh, um, I've had multiple businesses and, and uh, you know, really enjoyed working in some incredible industries. Um, but, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs find their magic in adversity, you know, in that moment where they think, oh, I've just been let go. Like the world has ended. What am I going to do now? Um, and then, you know, look at yourself as an example, Joel. You, you, you were in a situation where, you were let go you know by a family member 
and not even face to face, um, you know, and 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 but being in the corporate world and still having to face all those challenges. And then you've gone out there and you've started your own music business where you are you know, a, a, a teacher for both drums and guitar. But then you've also started Rockstar X to empower neurodiverse individuals globally. And, um, you know, if you if that hadn't happened, how much longer do you think it would have taken for somebody to start the concept of something like Rockstar X? Well, Matt, certainly not in my lifetime and definitely not in yours. <laughs> what are you saying? You keep going towards that old thing, hey? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, it's okay. I've covered up the fact that there's no hair there now and the the, you know, the gray kind of, well, you know, maybe I need to dye it blue again. <laughs> that works on you. <laughs> um, who knows? I'll, I might just do that again. Um so, you know, do you think, based on what you just said now, had you not been made redundant or not let go, do you think you would have ever had the opportunity to become an entrepreneur like you are today? Uh, no, because if I was in a nine to five job, where where would I have fitted the uh, that in? I mean, the only t the only way that that would have worked is um, if I pulled on artists and that was not very successful, my teens, because I now burnt that bridge and now I'm paying for it. <laughs> Uh, indeed. Well, if you speak to uh, somebody like Elon Musk as an example, he, the, the guy hardly ever sleeps. Um, so, but that's a whole <laughs> different discussion. Um, so, you know, I, I know we've got loads more um, discussions to go with more just in this series. And then, you know, uh, knowing you, Joel, you'll squeeze out another. No, I'd already, I already, I already showed you season three. <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, uh, our discussions have led on to uh, from, hey, let's have a chat on LinkedIn to, um, uh, you know, having season one starting Rockstar X, um, <laughs> you know, co-hosting on multiple different things, joining yeah. LinkedIn programs. And so you got to be careful where a conversation may lead. I mean, it's, uh, you just never know. Um, but I do employ you for your attitude and uh, for your, you're always smiling through things, even when things yeah. are, you know, seem to be, a little bit rough, uh, and and when you know you're yawning on the show because I'm clearly boring, boring. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> but you know the fact that you just take things with such a positive attitude, uh, no matter what the challenges are that come your way. So uh, you know, massively uh, implore that, and thank you for having that um, uh, magic kind of um, uh, way of looking at life. Uh, it 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 really is. Uh, um, contagious, should we say? You're very welcome. Excellent stuff. Well, hey, Joel, we did say we were going to try and stick to 45. The hour, yeah, I told you, it, it never works. <laughs> so, uh, let's look forward to two weeks' time, folks. We'll be back over yeah. here, whether it be YouTube, uh, Facebook, or LinkedIn. So, Joel, over to you to wrap up. I have, um, I want, I did, I know Jonathan would, Jonathan would not be happy if I, if I said this on, on, on live, but, um, as of, uh, on Sunday, I will be, um, uh, I've been asked to, uh, be, 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 a, be a drummer for one of Jonathan's musician friends and, um, that's just starting with a jam on Sunday, so we have no idea where that's going to go, but um, that's happening. Awesome stuff. Um, collaborations, it's extremely powerful. Um, and uh, who knows? Royal, Royal Albert Hall, maybe in 12 months' time. Yes. So we'll see you We'll see you all in two weeks. Uh, that will bring us to April. Don't worry, it's past April Fool's. Um, and it's not a joke. <laughs> Awesome stuff. Well, Joel, well done in uh, another great conversation. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't even know where that conversation was going to lead, but we definitely covered a few areas. Yes. Uh, got, I know Matt will not like this, what I'm saying right now, but uh, fighting, for the, fighting for the Right to Party will be staying around for a good while because I've now just come up with a smashing logo for it. So. <laughs> Yeah, I have a feeling it might be around for the rest of my lifetime. But please go ahead. <laughs> I'm for 93. So uh, 104 originally, but I'm not oh, so sure. What's, uh, what's, uh, what's changed? Uh, 
Well, you know, uh, I, I'm just not sure what kind of um, challenges there might be in the uh, uh, the world between 93 and 104 because uh, being 104, uh, um, hey, who knows what, what what's what's possible? Um, hopefully, I'm as fit and healthy as I am now when I'm 104. Now, shall I play out the shall I play out the final one or sh- or the uh... Well, I'll do both. There we go. <laughs> uh, we will all. We will see you all in two weeks' time. Meanwhile, don't do anything we wouldn't do. That leaves the world is, open, which is not a lot. <laughs> <laughs>